John chapter 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, last Passover for Jesus, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he would depart out of this world unto the Father, and that would be Acts chapter 1, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the death. And supper being ended, the devil now, the devil having now put in this heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, when the debate with Mary given that precious ointment upon Jesus anointing for his burial, Judas gets up, gets upset and says, "Now, why wasn't this used? It was three hundred pence. It could have gone to the poor." And I forget which gospel it is, but it says right after that. Judas got upset enough, he went to the priest. And he said, listen, how much will you give me? I will give you an opportunity, a time, that I will give you Jesus without anybody around him. So when Satan enters now into Judas, it's already happened. The deeds of Judas has, has begun to converse with the priest. Satan's now just given into Judas's heart. Judas's heart went first to betray Jesus. Now Satan's like, okay. Now I can use you. But the heart of Judas went first. So the supper being ended, the devil had now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. Everything's been given to Jesus by the result of the cross, the death, the burial, and resurrection. And yet it's recorded present tense before the death, burial, and resurrection. So what's it, what is it telling us? What is the Holy... Now remember, the Holy Spirit writes to us through the Bible. Inspiration. The Holy Spirit is saying, listen, Jesus is having a, his last supper. He hasn't gone to the cross, but you better rest 100% sure. He is going to that cross. He is going to die. He is going to be resurrected. He is going to the Father, the right hand, and God has already given him everything. There is no question, oh, what if Jesus, you can't say, well, what if Jesus didn't? There was no didn't. Christ came and was born and walked 33 and a half years on this planet to go to Calvary and to die and to be brutally treated Isaiah 53 at any time if he was not going to go to the cross if that prayer oh father I don't want to die Jesus at any time being God could tell the father okay that's it I'm done I'm coming home now and it would have been righteous and it would have been holy so what we're reading right now by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Jesus is already at the cross. He's not going to give it up. And between verses 3 and 4, you would insert Luke 22, 24 to 27. You can look that up on your own. That belongs between verses 3 and 4. He, rising from supper, laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And that he, God, poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel wherein he was girded. Now, Jewish custom was before you entered a room, they would do it. Whether it was not done and he's doing it now, it's not the point. Jesus, are, Jesus is not washing their dirty, clean feet to wash their feet. He's showing them openly a great illustration. To be humble enough to bow down before someone's feet, smelly, stinky, dirty feet, and to wash it. When Jesus came on the scene, John the Baptist says, I'm not even worthy to bend down to unlatch his shoe. There must have been a low profile thinking of somebody in Israel that would take care of your shoes or wash the feet. Because Peter is going to get upset. 
He is going to get angry that his Lord, his Christ, his Messiah is at his feet washing. After they had poured the water into the basin, he began to wash his disciples' feet and wiped them with a towel wherewith he was girded. So he had a towel wrapped around him. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. So Simon Peter was not first. The Pope was not first. Peter has watched Jesus say, what, what are you doing? Jesus picks up the basin, the towel, and scoots, walks over, kneels over to Simon. And Peter said to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus Christ right now with Peter, the main subject, and with all the disciples, Jesus is bowing down before his disciples. And he said often enough that, listen, you can't be greater than, than your master. Who's ever going to be the master, let him serve. Well, here is the master God serving. That's the illustration. I am humbling myself, God of all eternity, to, to take care of your feet. I am washing your feet, a necessary thing that you need to do. You got to take care of your feet. My understanding is with Korea or any of those wars that Americans were, the most major thing that the Army and the Marines would make sure their soldiers would do is take care of their feet. A diabetic has to watch his feet. You get diseases in your feet. Feet are very important because they get you going. They get you walking. They stink. They get dirty. They wore sandal-like shoes. And Jesus is washing. And to Peter, this is a very humiliating, humble thing that you ought not be doing. What on earth are you doing, Jesus? That is not your position. That is not your job. How dare you? And we know that Peter's not just doing it for a fool. We know that Peter has reverenced Jesus. Peter has great respect for Jesus. He believes Jesus is God, the Son of God, the Messiah. He believes all that. And he's like... And I would think that Peter would be... That's God down there. What right does God have to be at my smelly feet? Jesus answered said to, unto him, What I do thou knowest not now. Um, he's washing feet. How hard is that? No, he's not. Yea, he's washing feet, but no, he's not washing feet. There's more to it. But thou shalt know hereafter. And the thought is Jesus is going to set up a kingdom. You would think that as king somebody would be cleaning his feet. I'm just a fisherman. And I haven't even done that for three and a half years. Probably haven't seen my wife and any children. I haven't seen it. We know he has a mother-in-law. I have been on my feet for three and a half years living with you, Jesus. You've done all kinds of things. You've given me all kinds of power. What are you doing? What do you mean I don't know? I see what you're doing. You're washing my feet. How can I not know what you're doing? Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered and said, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Now, where is that salvation today anywhere? If I don't wash your feet, you're not saved. That's not what, this is not the subject. I'm trying to get you, because I'm not going to bring up what I'm trying to say, show you yet. It's not ready for it yet. But the foot washing is an illustration. It's not about washing people's feet. It's an illustration. If I wash these up, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my feet. And my head, excuse me. Give me a bath. Now 
There's a love of peace. Okay, if I can't, if you don't wash my feet, I have no part in you, then you wash me all over. Because I want to be immersed in you. Jesus wants all Jesus he can get. Peter. There's a love of Peter. He just, he's got foot in the mouth disease, but it's a good foot in the mouth disease. But it's not about the foot washing. Jesus said, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. Uh oh. There in verse 10 shows that once you're saved, you're always saved. You don't need to go back and Plead the blood again for salvation. You need to blood, plead the blood for, because you're a sinner and you sin. But as far as getting re-saved, reborn again, verse 10 says, no, once that has happened, it has happened and you don't need to get, do it again. But you see, as we walk through life, we get filthy and we got to wash ourselves. First John 1, 9, John, the writer of the gospel of John says how do we wash ourselves as jesus given illustration to the disciples we go back through the blood of our sins not our life but our sins we're going to pick up and start walking because god says go ye in all the world well our feet are going to get filthy we're going to pick up things we're going to see things we're going to hear things we're going to do things to make our feet dirty And there's another illustration about this foot washing. But also notice, he has washed Judas's feet. And yet he says, ye are clean, but not all. You can have somebody who goes to church and does everything the church does. The ordinance of the Lord's Supper, reading your Bible, praying, everything. And that doesn't make you clean. You can have your feet washed in the church. That doesn't mean you're saved. Judas has his feet washed. Jesus' illustration also did not hamper Judas from getting his feet washed by Jesus. I do like that one. Jesus knows what Judas will do, and yet still he bows down and washes Judas' feet no matter what Judas does. Are you getting to see what this illustration is to our lives rather than just picking up stinky feet and washing them. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean, all but 12 of them, but one. And still he does this thing of washing the feet, even though he knows that this one man is going to betray him and bring him to the cross, evidently. And he still treats him like one of the 12. No matter what. That's a perfect illustration for all of us today. Jesus told us to love our enemies. Well, there he is right there. There is the enemy of Jesus Christ. He is the one that sets Jesus now on the course. It's already happened. The course of Jesus being sold for 30 people has already happened. It has already meant that Jesus will now go to the cross thanks to Judas. And Jesus bows down before him and washes his feet just as the other twelve. And Jesus said, love thy enemies. There's the perfect, perfect illustration to show those disciples. When those disciples look back in the book of Acts and say, love thy enemies. Well, wait a minute. That night that I yelled at him about walking... You know what? He did it to Judas too. So when Peter and John, or Jane, I forget what Peter, in the early book of Acts, they are arrested. And they are put in jail and they're hold off before the council. You know, we proclaim you not to speak against this man's name. They're respectful before those judges of unrespectable men. 
Because Peter, and I forget James or John, remembers that day when Jesus had an enemy and he treated them with respect, just as he treated everybody else. Jesus teaches them now how to treat your enemies with respect, just as anybody else. And after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Do ye what I have do yeah, know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and lord, and ye say, Well, they have been. For so I am. Matthew 26, 21 to 25, 1 Corinthians 12, 5. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Peter, am I really your Messiah, Son of God, Jesus Christ? Yes, Lord. What am I doing down here washing your feet? Yeah, what are you doing down there? Later on, go watch James. Go take care of James. Go help John. Go help Paul. Stand up for Paul in your writers, in your writings. Help each other, guys. Because I'm going to be gone. Including the ones that persecute you, which they don't know is Judas yet. See, the illustration here is not just a foot washing, but help. And clean each other. Doesn't the Bible say later on, Paul, confess your faults one to another to help each other? You're going to get smelly. You're going to get stinky, you know. Tell them you got a little ketchup on your chin. Tell them, you know, your hair looks a mess. That clothing coloring does not go together. That suit is old-fashioned. Hey, let me show you the Bible thing and what you're doing is it, really not right. And Jesus didn't do it rebukingly. He didn't do it uh, angrily. He just humbled himself down and helped clean them. And there was no confession of sins. There was helping each other out. And he says, if I am your master, my Lord, there's no respect of Peter, James, and John as the top three apostles. You all work together. You all do the book of Acts together. Because guess what? I know something's going to happen. I know there's going to be a time coming in the book of Acts that you're going to hear someone got saved, your enemy, and you're going to fear him, fear him like you've never feared, feared anybody in your life. And you're not even going to believe his salvation. And one of you right here, I'm, I washed his feet and that guy brought me to the cross. Well, there's coming a guy who's going to join this assembly, who's going to be saved, and he's going to bring Christians to the cross. First, by death and persecution. Next, he's going to bring them to the cross by salvation. You better accept him in, you better help him as much as you can, because he's going to need it. Because once that guy gets on fire for the Lord, everybody's going to hate him. You guys better love him. Now I'm talking about Paul. And then it says, for I've given you an example. There are some churches that do this as an ordinance, just as much as you do the Lord's Supper. They have a foot washing and sometimes they'll put it in newspaper. This church will have a foot wash. That's not what Jesus said. It's an example. What's an example? Help each other out. He didn't, he didn't say, I command you to wash each other's feet. There's no commandment. Someone in your church is down and can help them. And don't make a big show out of it. Humble yourself in your position to... Help someone else. As Jesus did. These men needed help. What was their help? Their feet were dirty. That's it. That's all it was. And they got offended that he did it. Yet they needed it. It had to be done. 
I don't know what kind of disease or ailment you get if you don't wash your feet. But you will, if you never take care of your feet, your feet will go disease and it will go hardship. And you can't walk if your feet are not taken care of. I said you can't walk. And Christ has ordered us to go. Paul says in Romans 10, the feet of him that carries the, the feet. It's an important thing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. There's, there's no authority. There is no leadership. When you work together serving the Lord as... There's no church here yet. There's no preacher. There's no elders. No yet. There's just 12 men. Soon one to be gone. And you're going to go out in the book of Acts. You better work together. You better not get this, this hierarchy. Now James is the leader and, and set ahead of all the disciples and apostles in the book of Acts. Okay. But it doesn't go to his head. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. James 1.22 Do them. Joy comes by doing what God has told you to do. There is no other joy. Joy is living the Bible and seeing that the Bible is true through your life. And it can be. I've witnessed it many times. When these pages come alive in my life and with sin, with sorrow, with troubles, with happiness, with joy, with anything, the Bible comes into my life and I'll come out and, hey, that's a story in the Bible. Hey, that's something in the Bible. Hey, I'm living something like the Bible. Hey, I just did something Jesus did and got the same kind. Hey, that's great. I speak not of you all. Uh-oh. I know who I have chosen. I have chosen Judas. What do you do as uh, Calvin? Here is one guy chosen, and he's going to betray, he's going to have Satan into him, but he's the chosen one. That means he's going to heaven. Bull. Take your tulip and, and let it die and, and cast it to the ground. Whom I have chosen. Judas was one of the twelve, 12 chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me. Has lifted up his heel against me. Genesis 3.15. Psalms 41.9. Lifted his heel. That means kick. We're talking about Judas. Judas has been part of the twelve. From the day that Judas was. We don't know when. He has lived with Jesus. He has walked with Jesus. He has spoken with Jesus. He has touched Jesus. He has eaten with Jesus. He's had the power that Jesus gave to the disciples. Judas was never treated above anybody else or treated less than anybody else. And he even got his own foot washed. Now he wasn't with Peter, James, and John. But Judas can say, yeah, I had my feet washed by Jesus. Yeah, so what? Still go off in the lake of fire. He was the treasurer. I'm not going to say much about the treasury in the music position of a church. Danger. You got to be very careful because somebody I know who's a treasurer of a, of a church and all that finance and calls himself Judas. Thinks it's a joke. You're on dangerous ground here. I've got scripture grounds to say that treasury of who Jesus trusted with the money of his finance, the money of his ministry, the money that would do all for his life was handed to a man that Satan said, I can use. And Jesus knew it. Now, wouldn't you think that would be an illustration just as much? Hey, you better keep your eye on your finances. You know, the love of money. You know that one? No, it's money is the root of evil. No, it's the love of money. 
What was Judas particular sin? He loved money. Had to be scripture with scripture. He that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel again. This goes all the way back to Genesis 3.15. And Jesus knew it. Jesus knew the Satan work or the Satanic work that would be in Judas. And still he allowed him in the ministry. What do you guys say about that? And Judas was so good, no one had any idea until after he committed suicide what had happened. No one had any idea but Jesus. Now, can you imagine someone, let's say a year and a half in the ministry, Jesus would have revealed who Judas was. Can you imagine what Peter would have done to that guy? And follow the scriptures that the one that would get the 30 pieces of silver and all that? If Peter would ever knew what Judas was going to do, Peter would kick his butt, kill him, and kill him three times over. You know that. The guy picks up the sword in the garden and starts swinging and cuts the guy's ear off because he loves Jesus. Don't underestimate the love that Peter has. He may be speaking too often, but he loves Jesus. Now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. They don't believe now. When Jesus is resurrected from the dead and he goes in the upper room, meets them, they don't believe. He rebukes them, and I believe we're going to come to that in the book of John. He, t oh, right, yeah, okay, you are God. We finally believe. Glory to God. Hey, what's his name? Thomas. Thomas. We seen Jesus. Uh, we see the nail. He didn't believe, did he? And he's sitting down with them. They're having another little get together up in the upper room. Jesus pops in and says, Hi, Thomas. You want to reach in your finger? I believe. Verily I say unto you, He that receiveth whosoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. That's God. I got a note here. It says, Last Supper, possibly here. But the supper being ended. Now remember, it's not chronicle. I can never say chronology. Chronologically fit. And I was, I was told that there's a Bible, and I want to make sure there's a King James. But actually, they supposedly got it in order, which the order events are. It's, it's tossed about for a reason. I don't know why, but it is. You go through the Bible, it's like, wait a minute. Didn't we say, didn't we hear that this is the Mary that washed Jesus' feet even before it happened? See? Well, Jesus had thus said he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you should betray me. James 1.13 Trying to read this note here. Oh, I write sloppy. 1330 something hasn't happened. One of you shall betray me. Then disciples look one on another. No, he just met. Here's these 12 guys. You? Is it you? And they're looking at him. Is it you? They don't know who it is. Jesus says, one of you twelve. Now, you just picture here. Maybe they're like a big circle or something. Just gathering. Right. And he goes, one of you is going to betray me. Now, they're like, oh, yeah, I had a little suspicion about you. Well, I, and he's thinking, I had a little suspicion about you. Maybe it's him. And they just think that moment, they're all looking at the tax collector. I bet you it's him. Come on, aren't we all human nature? That tax collector was, was the most hated of the whole group. And you don't really read his name either much, do you? Like, you don't really read Judas's name as much. But then you got Thaedus. You don't hear about him much. 
very little about Philip, very little about Andrew. I mean, they're, they're looking at you got four fishermen. I mean, these guys just they have fun by beating us. Uh, listen, I grew up with lobstermen. Okay, the favorite thing for a lobsterman is to carry a knife and to throw it and play games. The, and here's four fishermen. These guys were rough, crew people. These weren't panty waist people that Jesus cho chose it. And now he just told them that one of you guys is going to betray me. And it's like, and they all love Jesus, even Judas. You see, well, how can Judas love Jesus? He's going to get 30 pieces of silver. Isn't that great? Including what's in the bag. If Je I mean, I don't know if I did. If Jesus, ever, I mean, Judas ever got the idea when Jesus died, who gets the bag? He was a thief, wasn't he? Well, if he dies, maybe he'll just go away. He won't find me. That's how much of a thief he was. Disciples look on one another, doubting of whom he spanked. Who is it? There is no suspect. Absolutely not one suspect among the disciples who, who it is. That's how well Judas lived. You couldn't say, aha. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom. One of his disciples whom Jesus loved. We know later that this is John. <coughs> When they ate, they ate on a on a chair that declined. Uh, you used to have chairs when I grew up. It was is that the one the ones the aluminum ones that had the neck and you, you could lift up the back up and down. Yeah, like a beach chair. Like a beach chair. That's what kind of thing they sat. They didn't sit in chairs like Americans did. And it's also proper for the digestion to sit on that. I would say crooked L laying down. Yeah, about that. And there's one. They, they got two chairs together. And John has his ear to the heartbeat, not of Chevrolet, but of Jesus Christ. Do you imagine the rhythm of Jesus' sinless God blood Acts twenty twenty eight heartbeat would have been? I wonder, as he spoke about his death, I wonder if it even beated faster. I'm going to die, boys. Boom, 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 boom. Peter! <laughs> Yet he never had that anger. He had holy anger. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask whom it shall be of whom he spake. Peter's like, John, Jesus loves you. Ask him. They don't know. Peter wants to know. Why do you think Peter wants to know? Because he wants to go kick his butt. Peter wants to kill him. Anybody going to betray my Lord, God, and Savior? Guess what Peter didn't realize? Zechariah. One shall betray me for 30 pieces. Peter did not know the scriptures. He wasn't taught well about the Messiah being betrayed. You see the absence of the knowledge of the suffering, betrayal, death, burial, resurrection of the Messiah there is. No one knows anything. He that lie on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is, to whom I shall give a sop. Now here's the here's the supper. Here's the sop, I give sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. I like how he keeps saying that. I wonder what they do with a Greek with that one. Can I throw my five cents in here? If you, no, I'm not going to. I'll leave it out. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. So, at a fellowship dinner, Satan enters into a man to go betray Jesus, the treasurer of JesusMinistries.com. Then Jesus unto him, said unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. 
This is the only time Satan has entered a man. Or at least recorded to be entered into a man. Are you ready for this? How slick is Judas? Now no man at the table knew what intent he spake this unto him. He just told him, the one who I give the sop, the gravy kind of stuff that you put your bread in, that's the man. He gives it to Judas. All right, Judas, go do what you're going to do. Do it quickly. What was all that about? Can I have more bread? John, you passed the lamb. What was all that about? Hmm, this is good. I don't know. I, where's Judas going? I don't know. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag, the treasure, that Jesus had said unto, buy those things which we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Judas went out to go get the groceries. Or maybe he went to go help some good people. Jesus just told you what Judas is going to go do, and you didn't get it. How's that for understanding? Again, if Peter had understood what Jesus just said and what Judas is going to do, Judas would never have made it. And it's funny because they say, go buy things. That's happened before when he was speaking to the woman at the well. They went to the town and got food. Uh, we're going to feed all these people. And we ain't got enough money to go feed all these people. Okay, that's kind of, But go feed the poor. That's what Judas said when Mary took that costly spike dart and poured it upon Jesus. It might have been given to the poor. That may have been Judas's platform. Feed the poor, take care of the poor. Give me more. I like that. That'd be good by a politician slogan tomorrow. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out. And let's have a note. It was night. It's after 6 p.m. This is going to be the longest 24 hours in Jesus Christ's life ever. Therefore, when he was going out, Jesus said, Roman Catholics will say that this is when they had the Lord's Supper. It happened before that, according, I think it's Luke. Therefore, when he was going out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. It's begun. With Judas going to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver, now Jesus is going to be glorified. Not only is it the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's Judas selling him out for 30 pieces of silver, the death of and the burial and resurrection of glorification. The fulfillment of the scriptures that when Jesus is on the cross, he can say, it is finished, including the 30 pieces of silver, which will be thrown down at the priest's feet and they will buy the feet a field for the price of blood. It is finished. If God be glorified in him, God shall all shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him God's glory was his son dying on that cross little children little children how old are these men yet a little while I am with you I'm going to say not even before the night's finished. They're going to leave the shepherd. Doesn't Jesus say that? Smite the shepherd and the sheep for a little while. That's not too long from what's going to happen from this time here. A little while. I am with you. Ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you. He's going to go to the Father. He tells Mary, don't touch me. I've not been glorified yet. Then he comes in the upper room, not even, I don't know, instant of time. And there he is. All right, now you guys can touch me. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I loved unto you. Uh-oh, there's the foot washing. Didn't I take care of you guys? Didn't I wash your feet? Did I look out for your well-being? You need clean feet? 
Because those feet are going to go somewhere in a little while. It's going to be called the book of Acts. Oh, let's get the book right. The Acts of the Apostles. One of them is only going to get one chapter and that's it. And that's all it's written. The rest of the chapters are going to be about the others. With clean feet. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. It's not self-love. It's not loving the poor. It's not loving the heathen. It's loving the fellow Christians, the fellow disciples. You look out for each other. You help each other. You comfort one another. You aid the other. And they'll recognize... Wow, that church, those people, man, they take care of each other. And yet, how many people are sitting in a church role with welfare? And I'm not talking about being lazy welfare. I'm talking about, man, listen, they work, they try, they can't make it. And how many people in the church are rich? How about the church itself? The the the, the glass cathedral and all that. Really? And you got people in your congregation are, are working maybe two or three jobs and you can't make it and you can afford a glass cathedral? You're not helping. You're taking. You're being a Judas. If you got a Bible believing church and people who really want to do right and really working hard, everyone should help each other. There should be a time when you got troubles in your life. Instantly, God's phone rings off the hook with how many members you got in that church. Lord, this one family, this one person. Lord, please help them. God, shall I give? God, what can I do for that family? What can I? Should be like that. That's your light shining. Not for salvation, not to go to heaven, not to. Because you are one of another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goes thou? That's a great question. Give Peter credit there. Where are you going, Lord? Jesus answered and said, Whether I go, thou canst not follow me now. But thou shalt follow me afterwards. Ooh. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Peter is a verb. I don't think he's lying. But he doesn't realize how weak his flesh is. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down my, thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow, till thou hast denied me thrice. Peter, yes, Lord, you got a problem with the flesh. And we're going to deal with that problem. 24 hours, oh, 48, 20, 36 hours, we're going to deal with that problem with your flesh. 6 a.m. approximately. And Peter doesn't really get out, I mean, he's on fire, but he doesn't really get right until he learns his valuable lesson that he denied Jesus three times. Jesus said, thou love me three times? He says, Lord, you know I love you three times. And Peter got the point. And because he got the point and got right and loved the Lord and willing to put his life down for the Lord. Acts chapter 2, he stands up with a set of keys. First key, he's preaching the gospel to all the Jews. He gets up in Acts chapter 10, still in the flesh. No, I ain't going, Lord. I have never done anything unclean. I ain't. He takes that second key. He goes into a house of the Gentiles and he preaches the gospel. Why? Because he had the love of the Lord. And he took his flesh. And he nailed it to the cross. He had to learn the hard way. But he learned. And Peter picks up the example here. In John chapter 13. He, I mean, he's rebuked by Paul. But then he gets in right. He says, hey, listen, like our brother Paul, man, he has some hard things to say. Woohoo. Blew my mind. But he's our brother in the Lord. Treat him right. 
Come on, James. I forget it's James or John. I forget what's wrong. Come on, let's go preach in, let's go preach in the temple. Well, Peter arrested. What are we going to say? Hey, you remember what Jesus told us? He said, don't think about what you're going to He said this was going to happen, remember? Yeah, Peter. He said, let's just wait for the Holy Spirit to open up our mouth. I've had enough problems opening my mouth. Believe me. Remember all the things I said? Yeah, I remember. So I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit speak. See what Peter learned? And he was able to go before the council and preach a good message. Saying, hey, listen, we ought to obey God other than men. The old Peter took a sword or a gun. Bang, 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 bang. And kill them all. Well, yeah, we'll let the Holy Spirit speak. And they let him go, and they went glorifying God that they were with, rejoicing, and went back preaching. 